Bible verse is Matthew 29, 9, or is it 929? I want to say it's Matthew 29, 9. It says, because of your faith, it will happen. Ooh, I what I just say to somebody yesterday. I said, it's our faith that moves things. Yeah. Our faith. It's God already gave us everything that we need within us already. Yes. It's already within. He gave us the tools. We sit here begging God when he like, I already gave you the tools. You just need a mustard seed of faith. The faith, follow Christ, and that's it. first episode of a mother before anything y'all y'all first and foremost mamas before we get into this i'm gonna ask you one question did you get some sleep today no you didn't so i need you to go ahead and pause this put a bookmark in it and come back to it after you take a nap because i know that baby's sleeping right now and you ain't even get you ain't even do you're supposed to be sleep you ain't supposed to be up trust me i know we'll see you in a minute but for the rest of my mamas welcome y'all Hey y'all, I got a special mommy with me today and I'm not gonna introduce her. I want her to introduce herself and everything she got to offer. And yeah, y'all, this our first episode. You get to be the oh first no. one though. I'm so happy to be here. Thank you for <laughs> considering me. Thank you for asking me. I'm really, really grateful. Uh -huh. um, guys, I'm Ashley. A lot of people know me as I Lashley. Um, I am a ATL lash tech and educator and also owner of 527 Lux Salon Suites in Lilburn, yeah. Georgia. She has some money on her. Period. <laughs> and I'm a mom. I'm a mom of yes. three and a wife. Two boys and one girl. Period. Yes. <laughs> so I'm going to ask this question majority for everybody that comes on this show because uh, I think this is the most very important thing um, overall for this show in the first place. How did you navigate like the, the level of success that you're at right now in your business? How did you navigate motherhood with your business, like building your business at the, like all of that at the same exact time, like. So the crazy thing is that I don't, like a lot of people from the outside looking in, they always think that I have it like so figured out. Mm -hmm. And I genuinely don't, I just, I try in every area. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so um, I do have support though. You know, I have a husband and I have like my mom and my grandma um, who helped me a lot or whatever. But I kind of, um, I make my schedule around my kids. So like, on, you know, during the school year when my kids or just daycare hours, I work during those hours. I come home. I usually I end my day like around 2 p.m. when they come home or whatever. And then I'll spend some time with them or, um, you know, like try to not work weekends or whatever, or only work early so in the morning or weekends. So I have time with them. But even though I try to balance it out on that aspect, it's still that sometimes you'll have a long day. Yeah. At work, and when you come home, I don't want to talk to kids. Uh, hey, I don't want to talk honest. to you. That's honest. That, yeah, I don't want to talk to Look. you. I don't care that somebody, you know, took your crayon. Baby, not to not, yeah, right, not now. right now. <laughs> Literally, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I do try to teach my kids space. Everybody That's needs good. their own personal space, and right now, I need my space. I don't want nobody to knock on mommy's door. I don't. I don't want to be talked to right now. Give me some time. You know what I'm That's saying? That's good. And then how do they feel when you do that? Like, how do they react? Like, because you're teaching them, are they just like, okay, my cool? Or are they just like, no, I'm still going to invade? So it's hit or miss. We don't, you know, <laughs> it, it could be a little bit of both. Sometimes <laughs> they'll just, you know, like, oh, okay, whatever. Um, I'm setting the timer for 10 minutes. You know, they'll do that and they'll come back in 10 minutes or That's whatever. That's so funny. Yes. What's the ages again? They are 11, 7, and 8. My um eleven year old, he do his own thing. You know, he I gotta I gotta pull up on him. You know, he like, he don't worry about me. Yeah, that's the that's the part I'm scared for. Yeah, so that's the kids where get we too old. They don't, they don't need you no more. Excuse me, hi. Yeah, he he's <laughs> doing his own thing. But my other ones, they are still very much so want to be in my face. Yeah. Um. But yeah, it's getting it's getting better as they get older. So do you think um where you started? in your business where you starting off you did lashes first right yes that's the very first thing you did yes. okay so when you started doing that and you were away and you had the support would you say it was harder was it hard being away from them was it hard just trying to raise them at the same time or the support was so good that you didn't even have to like worry about as far as like them being raised raised right or um, it interfering with your with you building the business is that if that makes sense so i had enough support that it didn't 
it didn't, it didn't bother me. The only, the biggest thing is that even when I'm there, you know, like when you're an entrepreneur, a lot of your money is made from your phone. So we're constantly on our phone, constantly on social media. Yeah. From my kids, it's like, hey, you've been at work today. Then you come home and you're on your phone 24-7. Right. But my kids, I, I create an environment that they can talk to me and tell me, like, put your phone down, mom. Like, or you're on your phone too much. Like, I want them to tell me that because I'm like, you know what? You're right. That's or whatever. good. Yes. But um, that, that would probably be my biggest thing is like, hey, when you leave work and you come home, put the phone down a little bit. Mm -hmm. But in regards to like raising them and all, you know what I'm saying? Like I have the, I have the support. That's what's up. Yeah. And it's a lot of parents that don't. So you, that is really, really good. That is really, really good. Yeah. I'm grateful. Um, so what is something that you would, what is something that you would um, give advice to with other moms that are trying to start a business and have children? What is some advice that you would give them? So my best advice is, um, I saw this quote. I don't remember if it was somebody said it or on Instagram. It was like, we all know you'll die for your kids, but would you live for them? Ooh. You know what I'm saying? And I like, I really took to that. And for me, it's like, I don't want to be the mom who's 40 something years old. And it's like, oh, now my kids are out the house. Now I can do Same. this. Same. Do you know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? I want to show my kids like, hey, I can still take care of you guys and I can still chase my dreams. And when I tell you, like, when you chase your dreams, your kids really are inspired by that. Like, mm -hmm. my kids, when I tell you, they support my business, they be marketing my business. I know, They that's do right. <laughs> all these things and I've, and it's like a character development too. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So they're seeing like, hey, this is hard for me to do, but I'm doing it and I'm not giving up. You know what I'm saying? That's so. My best advice is just go after it. Don't use your cute, your kids as an excuse or as a, you know, a crutch to hinder you. Like use them as a reason to actually full force chase your dreams because usually it works out better than you can imagine. You know, That's what's up? do you think your mom went after her dreams with you? So yes and no. My mom actually um, was an entrepreneur at one point. Um, we lived in Maryland and they have a lot of at-home daycares. Okay. She had a six-figure at-home daycare that mm -hmm. she was running. Um, she moved to Georgia and Georgia daycares are usually centers. They don't do at-home right. here. Right. So um, she didn't know how to pivot in this new environment. You know what I'm saying? Like this right. isn't she didn't know how to adapt to this environment. But, um, yeah, I did. I actually saw her chase her dreams. Really? Yeah, she did. She she had a very successful, like, she loves kids. She had a very successful daycare business in Maryland. It was when she came here, you didn't have the finances to create a daycare center. Do you know so what I'm did saying? So she, she did, still did the daycare stuff here? She tried to, but people here, they want their kids in an actual facility. No, you're not going to, your that, my kid's not going to your house. Yeah, I'm scared. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like the, the world has changed so much, but mm -hmm. it's still crazy because in Maryland, where I'm from, they still, all the majority of daycare centers are still at home. It's just Georgia is more facility um, daycare based. So that is, so you said, ah. Uh, Interesting. You got a different, you got a unique situation because mm -hmm. most of our parents, I always talk to my mom about this as well, but most, most of our parents did not chase their dreams the way they wanted to. Yeah. They kind of had to just shift the gears a little bit based on their situation with mm -hmm. what having kids and most of our parents had us at a young age. Mm -hmm. And so it was just like, that's why I asked you that. Like, okay, well, did you see your mom Yeah, follow her dreams and had, you know, while having you? That's what's up. But I will say this. Even though I saw her there, I also saw her give up on it when she mm -hmm. got here. You know what I'm saying? So in a sense, that was a lesson for me too. Like, hey, you got to be able to adjust and pivot. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, yeah. so, yeah. You think you got your hustle from her? Um, I think I honestly got my, yeah, a little bit. But I really think I got my hustle from my grandma. My grandma is that girl. Like, that is. <laughs> Period, Grandma. She is very much so. <laughs> hey, um, <grandma. laughs> hey, girl. She is very much so my inspiration. Like, if I know a lot of people, you know, like you have celebrities that you look up to, and I really, really love Milano. Milano was one of the celebrities that I, you know, absolutely mm -hmm. adore. But outside of her, it's my grandmother. Like, that's who I want to be like. Um, that's what's she up. was a school teacher. 
she just was extremely st- smart with her money. So um, she started investing in real estate. Like this is probably the first that's time. That's what I change at. Yeah. <laughs> this is probably the first time in my life my grandma only had one house. And that's because she said she's too old to deal with, you know, anything anymore. She had plenty. She had plenty of houses. She had tenants. You know, she's always done that. And she's always instilled into us. Um, and it could be like a little bit of trauma that she's saying this to just be very independent. Like always make sure you're. Your you stuff can, is good for yeah, you, you first. Exactly. Oh. So, um, just seeing her navigate through life, you know, always just having a very healthy bank account and, you know, being really smart from a nine to five job, not even, you know what I'm saying? Like who put her in this position. It's just, it it just really inspires me. I, you really struck me with some of your answers. I'm not (laughs) going Because like, I'm, it's, it's a, it's a great thing. Don't get me wrong. It's a great thing y'all, but. It's so many different dynamics of parenthood, so many different dynamics with moms and their businesses. I've just heard some crazy stories. I have my own story and you just have a really dope story. And that's what's up. I'm glad you have the support that you have, that you have with your business, with your kids being on board. They old enough. Even when they was little, like you still was good, like with your business and everything too. So I started when they were five, one, oh, they were older. and two. They were older. Five, one, and two. Mm-hmm. So okay. they ain't that much older. That's that's crazy ages right five, there. Five, one, and two? Five, oh, one, and two. Yeah, no, one and two. It's the yeah, one and two, Yeah, it's the y'all. one and two-year-old for me. And I don't want to make it seem like I'm looking for something bad or anything while I'm asking you this, too, because I'm, I'm just saying I it'd be some crazy stories that we hear or, you know what I mean? And so yeah. you are very blessed in this situation where you, like I said, you have the support and you have the backing and um, like being a mother and having a business. That is what's up. And that's good. And that's very, I hope it's very inspiring to the mothers that's watching. Um, and if you need that help with your business and you need that help with parenthood, make sure you ask. Don't be afraid to ask. Don't Period. get out there. Ask somebody watch some kids, something, girl. But you got to chase your dreams. Period. Um, and that's exactly what Ashley did. My situation, I, I probably, you know, I'm so grateful for this that I, I am a little blessed. I am blessed for sure yes, um, with the support that I have, but I still face so many challenges. So yes. I don't ever want anybody to look at my situation and think, oh, well, she it's because she has a husband or it's because she mm-hmm. has this, that, and a third. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Like, I still face a lot of stuff that I feel like will break the average person. I'm just really resilient. Is there, and any, I is want there anything this. you would share? I will share. So, um... <laughs> During the build out process of my salon or whatever, first of all, I walked into this situation thinking I only needed twenty to thirty thousand dollars. Really twenty thousand, but thirty thousand because I like luxury. That's mm-hmm. what I thought. Okay. I learned within two weeks that this will be about uh eighty thousand dollar or so project. Pause. Is this your right now thing? This is this sure. is this is the salon suites right now that we just finished. Yeah. Y'all, okay, for the people Share what it what it is that you have right now, the business that you just opened up right now. Yeah, so I have um salon suites located in Lilburn, Georgia. Um, I got the building in uh, May of 2023. It was a complete, it was an empty building, and we wanted to no, do no. complete renovations on it. Mm-hmm. Um, that was a shocker for me. You I was I got not twenty third thousand, and I'm good. Yeah, <laughs> when I tell you, it, it shocked me and. For about two days, I like, I don't even think it was two days, maybe about 24 hours, I sat in the bed. Like, God, what did I just get myself into? And then I shifted my mind from woe is me to, God, you wouldn't have let this happen if you didn't, if you weren't going to already work it out for me. You know what I'm saying? So I got up and I, and I just started making calls. We started figuring it out. Um, it, it was about probably like a $85,000 project. Um, we just finished it in February of 2020. Four, so it took Almost the timing minute. took so not only are we dishing out money on paying rent for a place that's not making us no money Ooh. we're Ooh. also dishing out paying you know the utilities um there and contractors every time you turn around you think this project is seven thousand next thing you know they found something else that you got to pay an additional three thousand like no. it was just so much um that i was not prepared for on top of that I feel like I always share this and I kind of share this on my platform that I feel like I went through the best and worst year of my life. I don't even know how that coexists. The best year because I'm really, my goals, my dreams are 
they're happening right before my eyes. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But the worst year, because not only was this the financial thing crazy, but also my mother was in the hospital, very sick. I then I have a sister who, um, she has mental health issues. She kind of was going through whatever she was going through. My aunt died. My husband's best friend, um, committed suicide. So I am, I don't even know how I was able to mentally show up during all of this stuff. It was days that I genuinely could not get out the bed. Mm. I literally just sat in the bed. You know what I'm saying? I can't, I can't even function. And then it was other days like, Hey, all right. When God has the biggest blessings for you, mm-hmm. I feel like the devil tries to disrupt it in the, you know, most craziest Absolutely. ways. You know Absolutely. what I'm saying? Absolutely. So I'm just like, okay, you know what? Keep going because when it's done, it's going to be better than you imagine. It has to be. This is terrible. It's a part of the plan. Yeah, <laughs> this is terrible. This stuff is terrible. It got to be, you know, something good on the way or whatever. So, um, yeah, it was, it was just, it, it was a lot. And I don't want people to feel like, anything is easy for me because of my support. You get yeah. what I'm saying? Like, and I think you say that often too on your platform too. You do say that often or people be like, okay, people think I'm this or that or whatever, but you have to know, well, that's why we're opening up now. And that's why we share the things that we experience in life, no matter the good and the bad, because it has to what help somebody else. Yes. And so, yes, she's very blessed, but there's things that she had to overcome as well. And it's, mm-hmm. you know, it's to let people know, Hey, no matter what, there's always something somebody's struggling with. Even if it don't look like, you know, it don't look like it's a struggle to you. You don't know what's going on. Period. And not only that, also, it doesn't, even if I didn't have what I had, you are c- in complete control of your life. I don't Ooh. care if you don't that. have a mom, <laughs> you don't have a dad, you don't have a husband, you got five kids, no help. You are in complete control of your life and you're the author of it. That's you know true. what I'm saying? Like, you can choose to be, woe with me, I don't have this, that, and the third. Or you can choose to make it work for yourself. I like that. Yeah, so that was a mindset shift for me too. You can you control this. You be you you're as successful as you want to be. I like that. <laughs> we'll be right back right after this commercial, y'all. <laughs> 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 Salon owner and Lash Tech, Ashley, a.k.a. I Lashley on Instagram. I call her I Lashley. Everybody does. <laughs> so I do have another question for you. Let's go. When have you found yourself or have you ever found yourself being a mother before anything, before a job, before a CEO, before husband, maybe, maybe before family, whatever, anything? So actually, yes, I have. Um, prior to my business, I felt like I didn't have an identity for myself. You know what Mm. I'm saying? Like, I felt like I was, that was, I was a mother and wife. So my whole entire world revolved around my husband and my kids. Mm -hmm. Meaning anything go wrong with them, my my day's ruined. You know what I'm saying? Like, this is, everything is revolved around them. Yes. And that's why I think lashing, um, that's why I think my career took off the way it did. Because when I started lashing, it was therapeutic for me. It was the one thing that, Got you away from everything. Got me away from everything, and it was mine. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Um, So now I'm still, my kids still, you know, hold that spot. They still come before everything, but (laughs) I have identity with myself now. So I know how to, hey, put Ashley first, too, um, you know, as well, so that I can show up and be the best mom. I love that. Put Ashley first so I can show up and be a better wife. You know what I'm saying? I love that. But um, yeah, it's still my kids before everything period a mother before <laughs> what oh anything period <laughs> no um okay so did you experience postpartum and if so well with any of your kids your three kids and if so do you feel how did like did you have support with that or and how was that for you? y'all so i was bamboozled and tricked ah, let me tell y'all my <laughs> first son was the best 
son ever, the best <laughs> baby ever. When I tell you, like, he just didn't cry. He was just, I just, I was like, oh, we could do this again. Run it back. We can run it back. We ran it back. And the problem is that when we ran it back the second time, we ran it back the third time too quick. Woo! We ran it back too quick. How quick again? I want to say, I think I was pregnant at my six-week appointment. It was, it was. <gasps> what? Or maybe, what? yeah, it was something like that. It was probably, or maybe I got pregnant right after my six-week appointment with my third one. She, she being nasty. Listen, it was crazy. <laughs> you were supposed to wait. <laughs> listen, we don't, we don't listen to the rules. But, but no, seriously, so my second one, he was colic. He was Colin. the, he's, I love him so much and I'm so grateful for him. But my baby was the biggest crybaby in crybaby history. I don't know. We can go crybaby for crybaby. Listen, <laughs> okay, when I tell you, and so not only am I used to just having my one. So now I have um, my newborn baby who is crying about everything, which I'm not used to. Mm -hmm. But also I didn't. I have like I was breastfeeding. So when my son would walk in the room, I would tell him like, hey, you know, get out the room or whatever. Cause I didn't know if it was inappropriate. I just didn't know how to navigate work, that. navigate it. And then I start feeling like, oh my gosh, does he think since this baby's here now, I'm always telling him to get out my face. Mm. So I dealt with so many emotions. And at this time, um, my husband, I love him so much, but I don't think he really understood what I was going through. Mm -hmm. And he is, I, 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 when I say he's the best dad ever, I always even sometimes say I feel like he's a better dad than my mom. He's just so patient and mm -hmm. nurturing and all yeah. these amazing qualities, but he didn't, I feel like sometimes they have a, a, a thing in their head, like you're a mom, you're supposed to do this. Mm. Do you know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? So when you're kind of, I know when I was um, kind of expressing my feelings, it was like, how are you complaining about something you're supposed to do? Like, you know, so it was dumbed down a little bit. Do you think our minds get played like postpartum make us like make our like a, we come up with these just these crazy things in our mind? Because what if it really was not that? See, I listen, I don't know. Like we me and my husband have been together for a very long time, 10 years. We, you know, we were young then. Mm -hmm. And I think he it, it may have been a little bit manipulation. Like, hey, I want to go outside. You you supposed to be sitting here with these oh, kids. You wanna go outside. Stop yeah. Shame on you. Yeah. So <laughs> when I tell you, um, but when he's there, he's like the he's really a, a amazing dad. I just don't think he understood what my body was mm -hmm. really going through. Right. Navigating, trying to not feel, you know, make my oldest feel like Guilt. I love him less that. or anything. It was just a lot on me. Um, and I will say this: if I knew what my second run would be, the third one would have come. Much later. later, or or maybe we just would have been two, two shorties. We would have been two. I mean, I always wanted a girl, so I would have, I would have ran it back for a third and one. So you can find but, out when that girl comes. In. Yeah, but when I tell you the the combination of um, having him crying and a newborn baby, my oldest, it was just a lot. I think I was in postpartum for about two years. I think that's the normal, um, scientifically, I think that's the normal amount. I think our, our hormones are crazy for the first two years. Yeah. Um, I think postpartum or just, just, just different, like anxiety or different things that ex we experience in the body happens for about two years. It takes like two full years for our bodies to kind of yeah. get back to two normal. My sure. two year mark is October. Come on, October. No, I feel like, <laughs> but it, it takes a lot of prayer as well. Um, mm -hmm. trusting God. And like you said earlier, making a, making a choice. Yeah. Um, and saying, hey, I'm choosing joy today. I'm choosing peace. I'm not going to operate in whatever my body's trying to, you know, wherever my body's trying to take me. Or my and you want to know something. I don't want this to sound like bad advice or whatever, but it's just real. Come on. I remember when my son used to cry and I would literally just sit him in his chair or whatever and walk out the room. And I love him so much that I can't, I can't just neglect him and stay out the room, but literally about three or four minutes, I had to, you just got to cry. I got to go. I have to go and I have to recharge because my mind right now, mm -hmm. I can't take this. Yes. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And when you, when you speak like that, sometimes people feel like, oh, well, what kind of, my, you know, but that's, that's real. Like no. you got to give yourself those breaks for your own sanity. I'm not going to lie. I just started doing that. Yeah. I, I'm three kids, three kids now. Like I, 
I just started doing that with my third one. And I ain't gonna lie, that little cup of minutes, cup of minutes felt good. Yeah, it do a lot for you. Like God, God, God. <laughs> yeah, help me. Or just breathe, count to ten, woo sigh, go get some cold air. I'll step. Out. What I do is I'll go walk outside while they watching the TV. I'll go walk outside. Yeah. Or something. Or if he crying in the high chair or whatever, I'm walking outside. Yeah, sit in, in, in the, front the car. Of the house. When you pull up, just for a few seconds. Sit in the house. I mean, sit in the car for a little bit. I'm. I, I still do that with their ages mm -hmm. now because I know the second I walk in the door, mommy, I'm hungry. Yep. Mommy, can you do this? Yep. Mommy, do this. Mommy, mommy, That's Bobby good. Roblox. Mommy, 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 mommy. That's good. So I sit in my car sometimes for a little bit because it's like when hey, when you it's game time when you walk in that door. Absolutely. Yeah. That's that's not bad advice. That's really great advice. And if you're not doing that. Mommy, it's okay. Yeah. That baby screaming to the top of their lungs. They 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 get they voice getting stronger. <laughs> <laughs> or they uh they vocal cords, whatever, <laughs> their lungs get stronger. Take that few minutes for yourself because if you're not being the best you, how are you gonna be the best mommy? You can't. You can't. It just I'm learn I'm just now learning it after baby three. Don't be like me. <laughs> Period. So that started with baby two when you started doing that. Yes, when baby you two. Walking out. My my third one. She was a she was a great baby too. Oh, okay. It was really my only my second child gave me that, you know, very hard. Like he she challenged me. How is it dealing with all the, with the different personalities or just because you know all our kids not gonna be the same no matter what like. Yeah. So. so <sighs> Y'all, uh, that, that middle child thing is really a thing. I it's know. really a thing. I just, I don't know. They just different. They do their own yeah. thing. Yeah, like, he's they... different. When I tell you, like, I, that is, he's the sweetest, um, but he's the one, he challenged me, mm -hmm. he challenges me in different ways. He is super duper sensitive. Mm -hmm. So I can't, and I'm, I'm more kind of rough a little bit you know like if somebody falls okay get up like what did you crying for you know like I'm just that's yeah I'm kind of <laughs> like that he is you know some kids you can look at them and they they know some kids you really got to kind of put that hand to their ass or whatever you know what I'm saying you gotta everybody's a little bit different yeah he is he does he's different from my other ones so um I just have to catch myself sometimes, like when I'm yelling. It's like, take hey, your time with that one. you gotta, yeah. I because for me, I really think about everything we do right now matters. I know. We'll Matt, see. everything we do is going to be a reflection of childhood trauma or yep, not. There it is. You yep. know what I'm saying? So and everybody, every child cannot be treated the same. Period. Exactly. So for me, it's kind of like, okay. I ain't trying to have no um, somebody marrying my son talking about, well, he don't know how to communicate because his mom did. No, baby. We want the the best, you know, individuals as possible. So I do double back and I, I apologize to my kids. Mm -hmm. uh, um, you know, I create a space where they can talk to me and, you yes. know, check me, not in a disrespectful way, but tell me, like, I didn't like the way you yelled at me like that, mom, because it wasn't, you didn't have to yell at Love me like that. that. And they... They they let me know about myself. As long as we being respectful, yeah, they're tell respectful me. for sure. But yeah. they, you know, they definitely um, tell me. But I try to be. I do the best I can. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? Like I do feel like I am trying to do the best that I can. You are. Thank you. You are. You're doing you. a very thank good you. job. Um, I, I I definitely believe that mothers only can do the best that they. We're not giving no handbook. When we when we come out that hospital at all, when we get to that house, it's like it's go time. It's just figure it out. Yeah, you got my but mama's way of doing it may not be the way you do it. One, you want me to mama. tell you the best advice that my therapist said to me? What? My therapist told me um, when I was talking to her about, you know, my kids, she said, you're loving them in the way that you needed to be loved. And basically, that might not be what they need. Do you know what I'm saying? Like mm. that is that was. That's a real thing. It make you be like, oh, you know what I'm loving them. <laughs> yeah, because like, say for me, like for me, my mom, she is a mom, like she's always there. She has my back. You know, I know that. But affection and actually verbally saying I love you was not a thing in my household. Mm -hmm. I knew she loved me. You know, I knew that. But it just wasn't. It was shown through material things. Do you get what I'm so saying? No, I like, got you. I'm going to take care of you. Yeah. Like, I, I yeah. So for me. I always say I'm a t like I when I, I probably overly tell my kids. I don't know if it's overly, but I say it so much, you know, and my therapist was like, hey, verbal is that's that's great. But what other ways can you do it that they need? 
That's crazy. Do you know what I'm saying? And that's a real thing because when I think about it, like, because I was taught that, you know, my mom showed me through, like, buying things or, you know, trips or whatever, I found myself, when I can't do something, I make up for it. Like, oh, okay, well, I'll buy you a toy, blah, blah, blah. You know what I'm saying? Like, I remember my son, he had a football game. And I always go to my kids' games, but this particular game I could not make. Mm -hmm. uh, it was something with, with my business that I couldn't make. It maybe was mm -hmm. class out of town. I don't know. But um, I made it up to him by nice. buying him a shoe or whatever it was he wanted. And really, I don't want to set that tone. I don't want to set that tone because even, you know, like if my daughter is paying attention to that, when she gets older and a man does something he doesn't, you know, she that he shouldn't, I don't want you to feel like you can buy her a bag or you can buy her something to make her feel like, oh, okay, this is okay. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, we really have to think that deep as parents of how it affects them when they get older. So when you bought him that, do you think he, or was he just like, thanks, mom? But like, do you he feel was, like it you made know, he, Yeah, I, I do think that he, he was, was like, thanks, mom, but I don't want it to be a habit. A habit. Mm -hmm. That, that when people so let good. you down, they can buy their way out of it. Ooh. Ooh, that is good. You know, I, I didn't. So I don't want to do that. Yeah, that is <laughs> that's good. a snap your finger. That is so good, though. <laughs> like it just makes you. I love that kind of stuff. It's just be like, okay, wait, hold on, let me rethink. That yeah, is dope. Shout out therapist. Shout out to the therapist. Yeah, she's the best. <laughs> because nah, that now I'm over here thinking like, wait. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like let me figure my, out. I yeah, love my kids. Yeah, but definitely. Definitely, I'm really big on making sure we're doing what they need for sure. Because mm -hmm. like once again, every child is different. Every child got to be loved different because they require different things like you know some kids more demanding than the other ones yes <laughs> they are i appreciate you coming on the show today thank you so really, much really, really, i'm so really grateful do. and i pray that um all the other mommies that's watching um you're inspired in some way shape or form um just by another mommy doing her thing doing the best that she can um being a ceo being a wife being a mom a mother before anything um <laughs> and just doing her thing y'all so thank y'all for watching and we're gonna catch y'all on the next episode is there anything you wanted to say before we can cut out y'all follow me on instagram i-l-a-s-h-l-e-i-g-h period period <laughs> love y'all we gonna catch y'all next time mommy.